What is blockchain technology? Is it the next big thing? Are you missing out on a once in a lifetime opportunity when some startups want you to invest in their blockchain based venture? Well, stick around. Before we dive in, you are highly welcome to the WAP Loaded Trading Course. We teach cryptocurrency trading and investing. To support this channel, kindly click the red subscribe button to become a subscriber and the bell icon to receive a notification immediately when we post a new video. And do not forget to share, like, and comment on this video. Today's topic is about blockchain and the exciting world of blockchain technology. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand exactly what blockchain technology is and why it's really hard to separate it from Bitcoin. Before we understand how blockchain technology works, we need to understand what problems it was designed to solve. So let's take a step back and let me ask you a question. How do we tell if something is fake or real in today's world? For example, a dollar bill, a driver's license, or a vote in the election. How do we determine whether it's valid or not? The answer? We keep a record of it. For example, each dollar bill has a serial number that is recorded by the bank. Your driver's license number is recorded by the DMV and voting records are used to track who voted and who didn't. So the same person won't be able to vote twice. Whenever you wanna verify that a document is legit, you just look it up with a relevant authority. We even have notaries, people who are licensed by the government to act as a witness to attest and record the validity of pieces of information or identities. You'll notice there's one thing that all of these mechanisms have in common. They are all centralized which means there's a central authority, whether it's a bank, state office, or person that has the power to issue and validate information. These central authorities have a lot of power, and as you know, power may sometimes corrupt. So, what happens if one of these authorities wants to change the facts, or even maybe change history a little bit? This may sound far-fetched, but even our world history is just a record kept by historians in a centralized manner. The phrase, history is written by the victors, tells us that facts can sometimes may be distorted by those in power. If you don't think that's possible, here's a real life example. Today, most money is just a record of who owns what to whom. Due to the subprime crisis in 2008, Almost a thousand companies in the US received over $630 billion that never existed before. Other companies have debts completely removed. Some would argue this bailout was justified, but you can't deny that someone decided to change the records of how much money was owned and owed. This is why Bitcoin was born. It was the first form of money that removed the need for a central authority. Its records are kept by everyone, not just by central banks. And when everyone is keeping track and verifying the facts, well, that means that you can no longer change the ledger of transactions whenever something doesn't add up or because it's more convenient. You actually have to start being accountable. But money isn't the only place where decentralization can play a role. Do you remember those big encyclopedia books we used to rely on when it came to research? Encyclopedia Britannica employed 100 full-time editors and over 4,000 contributors to publish what we considered to be the authority on knowledge. Just imagine the power those editors of these books had in deciding what was worth mentioning, condemning, condoning, or ignoring. Well, the last volume of the Encyclopedia Britannica was published in 2010. Today, information is much more decentralized with over 130,000 active editors that maintain different Wikipedia pages. The risk of any of them going rogue unnoticed is much smaller since each edit is public and can be verified by anyone. Decentralization reduces the risk for corruption, fraud, and manipulation. Blockchain technology is a new and innovative way to implement decentralization. In a nutshell, blockchain technology is a solution for the problem of centralization. It's a system for keeping records by everybody without any need for a central authority. A decentralized way of maintaining a ledger that is practically impossible to falsify. I mean, 
When so many eyes are watching and verifying everything that's being done, it's really hard to break the rules unnoticed. You may be wondering, why is it called blockchain? Well, imagine we're maintaining a shared ledger with many pages of records. Each page begins with a sort of summary of the page before it. If you change a part of the previous page, you'll also have to change the summary on the current page. So, the pages are actually linked or chained together. In technological terms, pages are called blocks. And since each block is linked to the data of the previous block, we have a chain of blocks or a blockchain. Many people think that Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious inventor of Bitcoin, created blockchain technology. Technically, he only created the first real-life implementation of it, Bitcoin. In fact, that word blockchain is never even mentioned in Satoshi's original white paper. The closest he comes to saying blockchain is chain of blocks. Now that you know what blockchain technology is, we still have two major questions to answer. How does it actually work? And is blockchain going to change our future? Let's start with the first question. Another way to ask this question would be, how do I create a system that allows the creation, verification, and updating of records by everybody? Well, there are four elements a blockchain needs to actually have a life of its own. The first thing required to support a blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer network, a network of computers, also known as nodes, that are equally privileged. It's open to anyone and everyone. This is basically what we already have today with the internet. We need this network so that we will be able to communicate and share with each other remotely. The second ingredient is cryptography. Cryptography is the art of secure communication in a hostile environment. It allows me to verify messages and prove the authenticity of my messages, even when malicious players are around. We need cryptography because of the first element. Remember, I said anyone can participate in this network, including bad actors. It's great that I can communicate, but I also need to make sure my communications come through unaltered. The third element is a consensus algorithm. You can switch the technical word algorithm with the word rule. This means we need to agree about rules on how we add a new page, also known as a block to our records. There are many types of consensus rules. In Bitcoin's case, we can use a consensus algorithm known as proof of work. This algorithm states that in order for someone to earn the right to add a new page to our ledger, they need to find a solution to a math problem, which requires computational power to solve. Computers around the network run calculations to solve the math problem and in doing so, consume a lot of energy. In other words, they do a lot of work. That's why when one of them finds the number that solves the problem and displays it to the network, they're basically displaying a proof of work. Think of it as the notes way of saying, hey, I spent quite a bit of energy here in solving this problem first, so I'm entitled to write the next page. As I mentioned before, there are other consensus algorithms that don't require so much energy. This is just the algorithm type that the Bitcoin blockchain employs. There are pros and cons to different algorithms, but in order to run a decentralized ledger, you'll need to choose one. Otherwise, it will be really hard to reach a consensus with so many people in the network. Finally, our last element is punishment and reward. This element is actually derived from game theory, and it makes sure that it will be in people's best interest to always follow the rules. So far, we've set up a network that has a way to communicate securely and follow a set of rules for reaching consensus. Now, we'll glue these elements together by giving a reward to people that help us maintain our records and add new pages. This reward is a token or coin that is awarded each time a consensus has been reached and a new block is added to our chain. On the other hand, bad actors who try to trick or manipulate the system will end up losing the money they spent on computational power or their coins can be taken away from them. In the end, the important thing to remember is that the punishment and reward system works on psychological behavior. It turns the rules of the system from something you need to follow into something you'll want to follow, 
since it will be in your best interest to do so. This was just a very high level explanation of what a blockchain consists of. If you want to dig a little deeper into this process, check out other tutorials in the Waploaded Academy trading course on Bitcoin mining. So there you have it, the four elements for creating blockchain technology, a peer-to-peer -peer network, cryptography, a consensus algorithm, and punishment and reward. However, there is a fifth element that can really be synthesized, market adoption. I mean, we can have a group of five people sharing a ledger with a consensus algorithm, but it doesn't really make it decentralized since not enough people are a part of the system. Moreover, if there's no adoption, there's not really any value to our coin, and the fourth element of punishment and reward isn't really effective. Only once you achieve critical mass in the number of users does a blockchain become truly decentralized and therefore immutable. And at that point, the coin of the blockchain usually begins to appreciate in value. It's hard to say what triggers mass scale market adoption. In Bitcoin's case, things actually started through use on the dark web, when people use Bitcoin to pay for drugs and other illegal stuff. But since then, more people have begun to research Bitcoin and blockchain and have seen the benefits they offer, either in practice or as an investment. The five elements of a truly open, public, decentralized blockchain. Up until today, there are only a handful of blockchains that have over 1,000 truly independent participants and as such can be considered as decentralized. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Monero, to name a few. If you're thinking that it sounds like a lot of hard work to put a blockchain in motion, you're absolutely right. But this is where Ethereum comes in. Ethereum is a do-it-yourself blockchain where all of these five elements are already in motion. All you need to do is build the right solution on top of it. Now let's move on to another term you may have heard of, a private or closed blockchain. This term refers to companies that screen and limit the players who can participate in their blockchain. It's a bit like how the internet, which is open to everybody and anybody, is different from an intranet, an internal network of company computers. While I assume some companies will find value in running private blockchains to improve their internal processes, it's far from anything exciting in as much as it has nothing to do with decentralization. To emphasize this a bit more, let's compare open, public blockchains to closed, private ones. A public blockchain is open to everybody. It's transactional and borderless. It's censorship resistant, and it doesn't require any third party. It's also neutral. There's no such thing as good, bad, illegal, or legal transaction. There's only a valid or invalid one. A private blockchain, on the other hand, is limited to authorized participants only, and it's governed by a handful of entities. In the words of Andreas Antonopoulos, in most cases of private blockchains, you don't really need a blockchain. You can just share a spreadsheet between the participants. The whole idea of blockchain was to decentralize a process through the general public, and that's exactly the opposite of what a private blockchain does. The features of a public blockchain, on the other hand, create enormous benefits. There's no single point of failure. The records are immutable, also known as tamper-proof. And finally, it's censorship resistant, so you can't really remove a record or stop it from getting published as long as it follows the consensus rules. Before we end today's lesson, we still have one major question to answer. Is blockchain technology the next big thing? I assume you may have heard of different startups that are using blockchain technology to solve some sort of a problem. In most cases, when I hear of such a company, I ask two questions. First, are they using a public or private blockchain? Since if they're not using a public blockchain, there's not really anything very disruptive here. Second, do they even need a blockchain? If you remember in the beginning of this lesson, we talked about the dangers of centralization. But these dangers are only meaningful if there's a lot at stake. For example, the queue to the pharmacy is managed in a centralized manner. But I don't really care since there's not a lot at stake and it's actually more efficient that way. Blockchain technology is very good at decentralizing, but it's also very inefficient, slow, and energy consuming. For example, Bitcoin's network takes 10 minutes on average to confirm a transaction. 
not the ideal waiting time for buying a cup of coffee. The only reason to choose blockchain technology as your solution is if your problem is actually centralization. If you don't need to decentralize something, you probably don't need to use blockchain technology and are better off with some centralized solution. In fact, it will probably work better. To sum it up, blockchain technology is truly disruptive, but at the moment, only a handful of use cases really require it. So the real question is this. At the current moment, is our world ready for more complex blockchain implementation than what Bitcoin already offers? In the early 2000s, there were a lot of Amazons, Googles, and Facebooks that never caught on for the changes they presented. Today, many of these blockchain startups face the same fate. Curious, new to crypto, and here for the money-making part? Then join the Waploaded Academy via academy.waploaded.com and take the training course on crypto trading today. Get daily signals, learn about blockchain, and make money.